Hello everybody, welcome to our last problem in module 15-2. This is another multiple linear regression model with a couple of, well, not even a couple, with just one dummy variable. So let's get into this one again. This one probably looks familiar if you've gone through all of the other practice problems. Here we're looking at this demand equation again. And in problem 15-1, yeah, 1A, we found that income was statistically insignificant. So we failed to reject the test, uh, the null hypothesis on that one. This model now, we remove income, but now we include a dummy variable for gender with the view that men and women have different consumption habits. Of course, if we considered non-binary gender identifications, well, we would incorporate multiple dummy variables similar to what we did in exercise 15-2b. We could have as many different categories as we wanted. Here, we're going to keep this one straightforward. We're going to have a binary gender identification, men and women. So we have then just one dummy variable. This model now states that quantity demanded is a function of its own price, price of related goods, advertising expenditure, and gender. So here's our new model. Prices are in dollars, advertising expenditures in thousands of dollars. The dummy variable, so this is important that the dummy variable is always defined. We always need to know what is the base case scenario because that influences how we determine, how we um, interpret the coefficient. And I'll touch on that a little bit when we go through those interpretations. So this is telling me the dummy takes on a value of zero for men and is equal to one for women. So again, in our data set, I can't have non-numerical data because the software is not going to know what to do with that. So we have to code it. And in this case, everywhere I see a, a male observation, I replace that male, that man, whatever, I replace that with a zero. Every observation that corresponds to a female, I enter a one. And so the, the numerical column is now going to be a series of zeros and ones. And of course, that numerical information, the software knows how to handle. So here is that output. We can notice right away, if you go back and you look at the first iteration of this model, 15.1a, where we had uh, income was in there and we did not have gender. Here we have certainly improved our model. The adjusted R squared of that previous model, I believe, was in the vicinity of 63. Now we've increased it to 67. Our R squared has gone up. So now I can say that our model or our cho chosen independent variables, or better yet, the product's own price, the price of related goods, our advertising expenditure, and the gender of the consumer capture 72% of the variation in quantity demanded. So that's our uh, interpretation of that R squared. And so there we've already finished part B. Part A, write out that estimated equation. Well, here I have our estimated quantity demanded is equal to 908.47 plus 82.56, oops, 56. This is our dummy variable, 56 gender minus 8.9 its own price minus 1035 price of some related good plus 741 advertising. So there's that estimated regression equation that provides us with the point estimate of all of those marginal effects, except remember that coefficient on the dummy is not a marginal effect. That coefficient acts on the intercept. So again, remember what we've done here is we have our dependent variable, in this case quantity, and then we have in this example, we have a few other continuous independent variables, but for the sake of illustration, let's just compress all those into one. And before having this categorical information, 
Our scatter plot would have just looked like one big blob of dots. I'm showing a positive relationship just for illustration. It doesn't matter at this point. Our scatter plot, we just had one big blob of dots. But as soon as we take that categorical information, I can now split my sample into two groups. So rather than having one blob of dots and one estimated equation, well, now I can distinguish between two different groups within my data. I have one group maybe looks like this, and I have a second group that looks something like this. And so now we can estimate the nature of those relationships for both of those groups. And in doing so, we know what the average difference is, the average difference in our dependent variable between those groups. Because again, this first point, let me just look at our estimated equation, and I can see here I've got a positive coefficient on that dummy variable, which means that here this is going to be that B0, and this one above it is B0 plus B1, which is that coefficient on the dummy. And so that coefficient tells us what is the difference in the average between our two levels of the categorical, which here is between men and women. Men being zero, women being equal to one. So how is that going to interpret our coefficient? Well, that coefficient is 82.56. That is ungendered. Men is our base case. So what this means, our quantity demanded, our dependent variable, is just in units. So what this means is that, on average, quantity demanded from women is 82.56 more than it is for men. So it's giving us that point estimate of the difference. Women being assigned a value of 1, and it's a positive coefficient, means that on average, quantity demanded from women is 82.56 more than for men. So this vertical difference here, that's that 82.56. Okay, so again, there's no, for each additional and increment, there's no incremental changes. That is the point estimate of the difference in the average between men and women. Good. Now for the other ones, for its own price, certainly we see a negative coefficient. Law of demand here holds. If we increase the price of this product by $1, quantity demanded will fall by 8.9. Price of the related goods. If the price of that related good increases by $1, quantity demanded of this good will fall by 10.35. I know it's a fall because this is a negative relationship. So certainly, those of you with some economics background are thinking, ah, oh, these are complements, right? The price of that complement goes up, quantity demanded for this good goes down. Then we have here on advertising, advertising is measured in thousands of dollars. So here I can say for each additional thousand dollars, because again, we're talking in marginal changes, a one unit change here is a thousand dollars because that's our unit of measurement for advertising. So for each additional thousand dollars that we spend on advertising, quantity demanded increases by 7.41. Okay, and then again, we can go through all of this on the intervals as well. I'm 95% confident that quantity demanded for women is between 18 and 147 more than it is for men. I say more again because we're looking at positive values. I'm 95% confident that if you increase the price by $1 or for every dollar that you increase the price, quantity demanded will fall by between 12.3 and 5.5 units. Similarly, I'm 95% confident that for every dollar increase in the price of that related good, quantity demanded for our good, or for this good, is going to fall 
by between 14.7 and 6 units. Finally, on advertising, each additional $1,000 that we spend on advertising corresponds to an increase in an average quantity demanded by between 4 and 10.8 units. So at this point, I imagine you've had a lot of practice now interpreting those point estimates, interpreting those coefficients. The, the little details that you have to be careful of. One, pay close attention to the units of measurement. The units of measurement of the independent variable, that tells you what is a one unit change. So it's a, a $1 change or it's a $1,000 increase. It tells you what is a unit. So when you talk about an incremental change, a one unit change, you know what that unit is. The units of measurement on the dependent variable, well then that impacts how you interpret those coefficients. Here, if, if this were in thousands, hypothetically, now I would say, well, for each additional dollar that each additional dollar you increase that price, quantity demanded will fall not by just 8.9 units, but now it would be 8.9 thousand or 8,900. So the, the units of measurement of the dependent variable, that influences how you interpret the coefficients. This one here, well, advertising is also in thousands. So a $1,000 increase in advertising increases quantity demanded by 7.41 thousand or 7,410 units. That's if we change those units of measurement to thousands. In this problem, it's not. It's just in thousands. So these are just 7.41 units. Okay, so pay close attention to the units of measurement of your independent and your dependent variable. And when you've got dummy variables, be careful how you interpret those. They are not an incremental change. They are not a marginal change. They are telling you the difference in the average between your level of the category of interest compared to whatever your base case is. Here our base case is men. So here I can say women spend or women buy on average or quantity demanded um, from women is an average of 82.56 more than it is for men. More because it's positive and I'm comparing it to men. No marginal increase, no incremental change. Okay, I'm repeating myself now. We've gone through pretty well everything. Last bit, those p-values, everything is statistically significant. Uh, our gender, prices, advertising, they're all individually statistically significant. The model itself is also found to be statistically significant, which means that the person's gender, the product's price, price of related goods, and advertising expenditure all together capture a statistically significant amount of the variation in quantity demanded. Okay, so that's it for our last um, problem in subsection 2. When we get into section 15-3, uh, you're going to see something very familiar. We're going to be looking at in 15-3, we're going to be looking at ANOVAs. Very similar to module 13 ANOVAs. So all of that stuff that you did in module 13, not quite all of it. Some of what you saw in module 13, I'm going to show you how to use regression methodology to do those ANOVA type problems. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.